Hi everybody, welcome to Whiskey Mystery. I'm Phil. I'm Deepa. Last week, uh, last episode, we revealed Abelour 18. And I was talking about, well, first thing I said it was a space side, and then I read on the box it said Highland. I was like a bit confused, but they actually described themselves as Highland Speyside aged malt. Because <laughs> of course, Speyside is part of the Highlands. Separate from that though, I was surprised by how good the price was on this. We paid $98, but it was two years ago. And in the comments, David uh, Owen, I think it was, said that in the UK, this is now sold at a 500 mil bottle, and it's also more expensive. And I looked at the numbers and yes, in the US, you can still buy this for about 130, but in the UK, 500 mil costs 118 pounds at Master of Malt, which is about $160. So if you bring that up to 750 mil, that means it's a $240 bottle when we paid 100 two years ago. So I suspect that next time this appears in the US, <laughs> With tariffs, this could be a very expensive bottle. So if you like a nicely balanced 43% sherried whiskey in the US, go and buy one now. Because actually I just want to have a taste again before we start, because it is sort of relevant to today's bottle. Hmm. Very nice. What kind of inflation rate goes from 100 to 240? Anyway, what are we doing today? We are blind tasting bottle number 143, chosen by Pete Head, out of 170 bottles still to go. So we are going to nose it, taste it, rank it somewhere on the shelf. Viscometer. <laughs> Do we try the viscometer camera? Here we go. I'm pretty sure we're safe. I just don't know if it's going to... There it is. Okay. Let's have a little go on the viscometer. I'm putting my eight mil of today's whiskey in. Actually, maybe if I just let you... S I'm gonna use this to, to power up the viscometer. Here we go. <laughs> so I need to fill it well, I'm actually just charging it with air pressure to push it up. And then when it gets down to that line, start. Now I've done this test yesterday and uh, the vodka is about, oh, I forgot what the vodka number is now. 310. So it will be based on a percentage of that anyway. For the next 12 minutes, let's get going on this whiskey. So yesterday's glass, we did enjoy it, didn't we? I think we're warming up to sherry a little more than how we were in the past. This is yesterday's glass. What's left it's behind? Sweet, it's sweet. Sweet? It's quite caramel, it's isn't from, it? From yesterday's glass. Is there anything smoky or peated about it? I kept going backwards and forwards on this. I'm not picking up any smoke. I could be convinced there's a very small amount of peat earthiness in there, but it might just be residue from whatever the sherry wine thing is, I think. Why don't we pour? Can we do glass cam? And I don't know what happens. Let's see which one overrides which. Okay. <laughs> Let's pour. I have to say there's not much left in this, uh, in this glass. And that is pretty big bubbles here. Pretty big. In fact, we'll go straight in. That's definitely bigger than 50. Yeah, bigger than 50. 56. Wow, it's bigger than 56. I don't have anything in between that and 61, which is bourbon. And it's not that big, but we're looking at high 50s, I think. Don't you think? High 50s? No, 55 to 49. 55 plus. 
And with that in mind, then I think, should we go? Should we go very watery? Let's do a watery one. Actually, let me have some of yours. <laughs> Just that if this is high 50s, let's start off soft. Now that I have that memory of the Apple Hour as a as a balanced sherry, let's see how this this does. Very uh, spice. It's definitely richer, isn't it? It's like richer, darker sherry whiny notes. It's more of sweet spices rather than fruity. Very watery. Because I put a lot of water in. There's definitely earthiness in there. It's not dirty, but there is a char earthy something underneath. Could be peat then. But not on the nose. Of apple, but we're eating more of uh, cloves. Cloves? Uh, and we seed. But that's not the main note, is it? What is like the, what's the main thing you get? Mostly, maybe it's spicy, but it's sugar in it. Quite sugary spices. Rather than food, not foody. Okay, and um, what else were on our notes? Orange zest, a bit of, <laughs> a bit of chocolate and cheese. Did you drink that? Yes, the water first. You don't want to drink any more? No. <laughs> Too I mean, watery. I first drink. Mm. Viscometer. Um, I've missed it there, but I can actually see it still going. So on the on the stream because it's delayed. So what's three twenty eight twenty seven three twenty seven? It was, wasn't it, roughly? And that works out at about a hundred and four percent of the vodka. We've had some at one hundred five some at 107 so we're not seeing a big range yet so 104 slightly less viscous than others that we've had we'll see how that that uh, works out if they all become 105 percent then we can forget it oh, it's, it's nice and rich though it's that it's the dark it's almost like vanilla, rum. Almost, just a vanilla. You know, I, I thought maybe it's PX and not Oloroso. Or oh, maybe brandy. Cognac. Cognac. Okay, what are the notes? Even, um, pine D needles. DZ yeah, oil. pine needles and tea tree oil. It's right. I've just thrown my squirt on. It's a why don't you taste? How are we doing for time? Not too bad. Oh, that's right, because I was talking about apple hour to start. Very, very sweet. Very festive. Sweet, Christmas. festive. That's giving. It's quite herbal to me, but they're actually quite herbal bitter at the end. Certainly, let me go again. Oh, at the end, oil. And uh, it's about peppery throughout. I would say mm. the ABV is um, 56. It is quite peppery, so presumably European oak. Because it's not it's not peppery hot at the beginning, which I tend to feel alcohol hotness comes in at the beginning and then diminishes. Peppery spice from the barrel, I think. You don't notice it at first, but then it builds later and it adds to the long finish. And it is quite a long finish. Yeah, but the second half, uh, the, the flavour of the sweetener disappears. But the pepper is still there throughout. Mm. But nice, free. To me, the sweetness is maybe more towards molasses prunes than it is sugar. So I don't think rum. Piek, I don't think it's wine. I'm not actually big of prunes. You're not? I'm a more of spices. The finish is a bit shorter now. <laughs> more doors. Oh, what is it? Brandy rather than big. Um, yeah, go on, keep going. I've got to just... 
Actually, burning got food to pick up. This is the athlete of the barrel, sherry, brandy, wine, all mixed together. So it could be a, a mix, you think. Okay, let's bring up the spreadsheet. I'll have to scroll down because it is a, oh, not that far. It is a high one. Let's say it's 55 plus. What do we have in here? Deanston Oloroso. You know, I've been searching for this. I've been searching for distillery characteristics, and the problem is I can't get past the heavy sherry. I've stole my sugar. I suck up at the first tip. Sorry, I've got, to, I've got to do this again, haven't I? Scroll down. Right, where where was I? I got distracted with that thought. Um. Oh, hang on. Oh yeah. Ah, right, that was weird. It's, it's beautiful. It keeps going. Good quality, certainly. Right. What could it be? Deanston? Oh, Ben Nevis? Could it be the Ben Nevis? That was in recently. Uh, a Glen Rothis is heavily sherried. Let's see. I'm looking now in the peated ones. It could be the Kilcarran, could it? Deanston, oh, Deanston PX. Cavalan Sherry, well, there's actually quite a few in here. There's quite a lot. Um, right. Yeah, maybe the years. So the, let's go again. Okay, age. So we know the ABV is high. Is the age old or young? I can a slight Simpler. Matic. Finish. Slight match. Very subtle. I think it's time for. Better or worse? I can I forgot that I really... Better or worse than? Well, it's certainly different from the Glendronic 18. This has a similar pepperiness, but the sherry is more herbal sour. That's why I'm thinking it could be PX. Better or worse? I actually prefer two days over it. Okay. Pop, 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 die. Uh, Deanston. Uh, uh, did I say Deanston? Uh, Glendronic 18. But I, uh, oh, good. So we it's think. Stop, but I think I'm back up. All right, a stronger one now. I see the problem with him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it's an icky. <laughs> Oh, oh, I, I, I like it because it's so different. Yeah. But it's better today, it's better. Not for me. Well, wow. I've got to push that down again. Yeah. It's too, too much. Icky. Too much matchsticks. Too suffery. Too much matchsticks. Okay, one more. Hmm. I'm surprised by that. Oh, 53% for the Springbank Burgundy. It's really good, but that made me... Now I have more respect for this after all this comparison. Okay, let's go back. So I get more point. Mm. No, it, it tastes simpler to me now. Oh, you like it more? I like it less going back. I want to try one more. The Malbec. Could it be a long run? Hmm. Much more earthiness going on there. Because I thought it could be that long row sherry. We're almost out of time. No, I cannot have that. I just think at the same time because it is too sweet. I have to put after that and make it bitter. I thought it could be the Bonahaven. This is Pedro Jimenez, but it's 54%, and I think it's stronger than that. Stronger ABV. Uh, could it be the Kilhoman 8? I would expect that to be more robust. We have a long row sherry. Ah, uh, but it's better than me, BD. A, a oh, Deanston maybe. Bordeaux, a Craig Ellicky 16 sherry cask. And um, we have a paper edition of 
a Deanston PX, which is a higher ABV. And I, I kept thinking PX, and I'm gonna go for the higher, the higher version, I think. Time is up. Get your guesses in. What are you thinking, Deepa? What's that? Deanston PX. In the other option. I think I'd probably go for Do you think that's fine? I would prefer something brandy, but I can see any brandy. brandy. Well this is sherry sherry sherry. Okay, um maybe I'll try. But it's an upbeat. Okay, I'll go for this. Do you think it could be wine then? You're thinking winey more than sherry? Maybe. A uh, uh, bottle more brandy, but I cannot see any brandy. Is this That's a Bordeaux. That's funny, we've both picked Deanston. And I just went back to think, are we getting any of that typical Deanston grassiness? No, really, no. I don't have any gossip in the back. I don't want to pick anything. Well, that's not part of the game, is it? You have to pick something. That I would get five out of effort. For this. Based on everything you've tried, I think it's going... I, I'd rather have it than that Craig Ellicky now, but I think the Glendronic 18 is better. But so it's going I, to be low. It, it, it makes it very better after this week, Would you just rather have the Abel Hour? Ah, uh, this part is better. Well, okay. Both, both at the same. It's just so it's, the profile. It's very, very sweet. So that means it's going to be down here somewhere. Mm. And the value, I would think... Below 150 for mm. this. But if you like sherry, you're probably going to like it. Mm. Right. Are we ready for the reveal? Let's do a quick check-in with everyone. Oh, Ron. I missed, did I miss that? I missed a super chat. Ron. Oh, Ron. <laughs> I did that last time, sorry. We will be putting you into... I hope I didn't miss anyone else. Sorry, thank you very much. No message, just a donation. Much appreciated. Let me see who's in. Jimmy Legs in, Donna Pass is in, GG UK. I know, um, I know Roy's doing a, a Patreon lock-in, so I know some people will be over there. We'll catch you there later. I see False Graph, Lucas, Peter. Just pop in to say that I have to watch this one on replay. Yeah, okay, I understand. <laughs> Jimmy Leg, there is no standard strength Abel Hour I need. A bunner, yes. Everything else, no. Fair enough. ABV snob. <laughs> Just oh, there was a nice mention today to Phil and Deepa by Aquavita. Yes, I. Oh, on the live, or or do you mean on the uh, recycled review? Because I saw that Roy was. Um, he was recycle reviewing our bourbon, mm -hmm. um, the bookers. Yeah, so that was nice. Hi, Ralph. Nice to see you in. Okay, I'm scrolling down. I see people are guessing. There's a few guesses. There's Cavalan Sherry from Lucas. Uh, Deanston 10px from Gigi. That's that's with me. Craig Ellicky Sherry from Matthias. Le J. Oh, Le J. 21. I'd forgotten about that one. Right. A lot of guesses coming in. We better jump down to the end. Matthias, there is a Royal Brackler 11 that's matured in virgin oak. Could it be? You know, we've made the mistake. The more I think, the more I like it. We've made the mistake of virgin oak being confused for sherry before now. So I do wonder. Hang on. Is it yummy? It's sweet and it's a dessert. The pepperiness makes me think not virgin oak. Makes me think oh, European oak. No, no, it's that first oak. I don't get that metallic vanilla thing of virgin you, oak. No. No, and it's very peppery. Are we ready yes. for the reveal? I, I can't wait. Do you know? Are you going to change your mind? Well, I have no other option. I, I don't <laughs> even bother. And I prefer, I, I know that it's raw. Oh, you, well, pick something else then, if you know it's wrong. I nothing else to pick. Well, you can pick that if you want to. Oh, um, 
But I just go farther far now. <laughs> okay. Here we go. It is. Oh, it is 57 ish percent. Oh, it's 58. It's only eight years old. $120. I know what this is. This is the Kilcarran. It's a Campbelltown. No way. Wow. It is. It's the Kilcarran 8. I'm not getting any muck. Well. Not even fantasies. We did say, hang on, where's my, I can't even find the place to rip the paper off. I did say cheesy though, didn't I? Chocolate and cheese I had in the notes. I don't think I said that today. Yeah, we got a uh, funky, funky cheese. This is the Kilcarran 8 Oloroso. I'm kind of glad that it showed up because we've emptied one bottle and we didn't get that right. Did anyone pick that? This bottle is has become uh, a, it's become a bit unobtainium to be honest. Oh, but but uh, sherry is it? I think it's a, it, I think it's Oloroso. Why didn't you have a look and see? There's no mission. I think I've got it written down here. Oloroso. Now we paid one hundred and twenty yeah, dollars for it at K and L, um, which was expensive. I know Ace Spirit sold it for about ninety dollars. I think it was. This comes in at ten point five dollars per year. What did I say it was worth beforehand? Um, I said below one hundred and fifty. We thought it was quite young, and we thought it was so heavily shared. This is. Hang on. This is our first Kilcarran. I just realised. Oh. <laughs> let's bring up the chat and see what people thought. Um, let's see. Oh, you're right. I didn't even bring up the painting today. See, the peatiness was, it's like, I don't think there's, there may not be peat in this Kilcarran. Does someone know? Is this peated or not? I thought it was more leathery. Um, char oh, it's heavily charred. That's what it is. This is a this is a heavy char barrel, but I don't think it's peated, so that makes sense. That's why get a pepper. That's where this earthiness was coming from. All right, let's um, let's go back to the chat because I know a lot of people have tried this and people have a strong opinion about it. Brian Kirby, I feel it was the KK8. They would have said something about the heat without a couple of drops of water. Well, you know, we did put water in. This one is unwatered. Mmm. Kind of bitter finish. Okay. Herb, almost missed this. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Lucas, wow, strange. Pepperines would push me towards fresh oak. Um, let's see. No bacon? No bacon, Triketa. Let's see. My guess was right. Falsecraft, did you get the KK8? Is that is that you? Another peated miss. Bruce, I don't think so. I think I said perfectly how much peat is in this. <laughs> because I said I'm, I could be convinced there's a little bit of peat. Very mm, sad. But I don't think we missed it. Earthiness, not smokiness. Um, let's see, let, let's go down. Did you again read their private notes? Oh, <laughs> hang on, did Matthias get it? Recharge Oloroso, oh, Bruce, okay, that yes. Makes sense. How much peat is in this? Does someone know? I have the KK8 bourbon. We have that in here as well. That's less peated than the 12, strangely enough, fair enough. Um, got our second bottle on the shelf. Brian Kirby, $120 for that KK8. Jeez. <laughs> it's $80 over here in South Carolina. Yeah. KNL knew that this was going to sell out. Uh, they knew. Now, $120 with taxes in California. It was actually priced at 
110 probably. As far as I know, it's not Peter Zelenier is saying. There you go. Good effort, guys. Uh, Ralph, who does the right get? Matthias. So I think it's Matthias who got it. Whoever got it. Is it Matthias? Have some fireworks. We want freedom. I thought all KK was lightly peated. Yeah, I would agree with that. There is peat in it, but it's Kilcarran. This KK8 is a belter. I would love to try the 16. Right. But I have to the summer is fat It's very dessert. Let's go again, because this is somewhat of an iconic bottle at the moment. I'm kind of amazed that we picked this out because it only went into the blind tasting uh, a little while ago. I mean, very sweet dessert. Sweet, everything, very dessert. Yeah. Well, I would still say. Oh, and a very thick viscosity. No, 104% of vodka. Let's go by. Now, this is only 46%, but let's try. Glendronic 18 again. It would make a bitter after the sweet in this. Mm. This comes across as sweeter to me. Sweeter. Wow, more rounded. Very good. So I would put KK8. Oh. Let's do a little reshuffle. And add more gut for this. And if. And add down. I think you keep talking and uh, I'm that, uh, put them, the, the, the wisdom the confidence right where are you going to put it I think we're going to go in here which means Port Charlotte Isla Barley heavily peated is going off the shelf where do you want to put the KK8 would you rather have it above Old Pulteney I would put that in front of our 18. What about 17? Oh, put this. Oops. That'll do. I about put it in here. Yeah, but what about the KK8? I don't care about okay. those two. <laughs> no, where do you want to put the KK8? Yeah. Right. I think... It's because I don't... I put them at the lid and add that maturity or the double maturity. Maturity. This is this is like the parent and this is like the rowdy child. It does taste half its age. If in California I was having to pay 120 for this, which we did. And um, you can still get this. What did we pay? 116. We paid less for this. Oh, definitely buy this over the Kilcarran 8 at the same price. But that's unlikely. I think this is typically around 160. At this one. Today. Well, we had to pay 120. At its original price, I think the relationship is fair because this should be half the cost. Um, but just the way that it's blown up, this was selling on Scotch whiskey auctions for £120 plus a 10% fee. Convert to the US. I mean, no. This is. Is that a hundred dollars uh, worth? Is that a I'm going to buy. I think it's a double whiskey. Yeah. Much more classic. Okay, I buy more stuff of this. Uh, I've forgotten which glass it was. So I'll just, I'll just pour you some, dear. <laughs> if you take a very similar kind of dark at the okay, let me go back to the chat. Oh, the chat is st still up. Okay, the chat is still up. Let's see, Matthias. I've had the KK8 bourbon. Oh, yeah, we've done that one. Where am I up to? Right here, false graph. No, you didn't pick. So Matthias, we need to get your choice, don't we, of top shelf, bottom shelf, deeper side, my side. I'll look out for it if you've already done that. Zelenir, 
just make sure you have the right batch of the KK8. What, 57.1? You know, I didn't pick this because I didn't think it was, I thought it was going to be more noisy, you know, more earthy, but anyway. I've heard a few voices that KK8 bourbon cask is better. I suspect I would like the bourbon cask better. We'll have to wait and see. Um, Triketa, let's see. Didn't see the video yet. Oh, false graph, you're chatting about something I've missed. Heard the 2021 KK8 will be sherry cask as well. Yes, I've heard maybe less char, less sherry, but uh, yes. Um, GG, the KK at 57.1 Sherry is amazing and complex. Better than this one, GG? What do you think? The older release was the 56, right, the bourbon one. Obviously, you can tell from the color which one is bourbon because it's lighter. Uh, anyone compare the KK8 Oloroso to the standard and heavily peated. I'm not aware of seeing any reviews of that, Graham, but maybe someone has. I'm sure they have. Sorin, the Glendronic 18 is a staple in the sherry matured single malts and a sherry monster. Matthias, back again. Wi-Fi went down. Right, pick a bottle, Matthias. You're, if you missed your fireworks, here they are again, Matthias. <laughs> Where's the Glendronic gone? Let me try it again. I have put, put a fatat for some of you, if you do not want any spirit of bitterness, go for this, because this part has no bitterness. Well, I love them, but I'm saying. Bitterness, I think this is more balanced and sweeter. That's what you were saying. This one has some bitterness. No, no, I'm just, I'm just, I think if you want Which one is more bitter? This. Okay, you're saying the Glendronic 18 is more yes. bitter. So, but I'm saying not more, but I'm saying if you probably experience bitterness, then I see bitterness, but then I see no bitterness. Okay, you're saying this one has no bitterness. Mm. That's a bit different from my experience. But that, what you're talking about is that I would say this one is a bit more punchy and there's much more earthy, dirtier underneath this one, the KK8 and the Glendronic 18. I mean, it is amazing that we are comparing an eight year to an 18 year on sort of like which one is better. Um, the Glendronic 18 is much more classy and neither of these are our preferred profile of sherry, but I am warming up to it. We've actually... We've actually been moving them up a little bit. Is there anything else we would go? Let's let's see. You know, we haven't had the Glenfarclas 25 for a long time. Maybe these should move up. Look, we've got quite a lot ahead of it. We'll maybe think about that after. Right, here we go. Matthias um, is deeper side, bottom shelf in the middle. This is going to be number. Oh, we've gone long today. We're chatting too much. This is going to be number 144, Matthias, I think. I just threw some letters in that vaguely look like your name. Uh, maybe it's the freezer that we'll be able to put later. Beam. Yeah. I think, um, I think Matthias has absolutely made the most picks. Oh, something light. How are the bubbles? Oh, that's the fat bubbles. I think they are pretty big. You very soft, ABV. Mmm. A very different experience. Right, a final check in with the chat before we run away. Thanks for that, Matthias. We'll be checking that one out on Thursday. Although, I thought maybe. You know, we um, we wanted to do old Ardbeg versus new Ardbeg, Ugedal. I thought we might do that next episode on Thursday. So we might do that or we might do the bottle. We'll see. Do you want to see the Ardbeg old versus new? Old being 2014 bottle, Dusty, that I picked up. 
Right. Side by side comparisons can be very educational, Martin. Yes, they can. Lucas, what really surprised me is the pepper in the Kilkerinate. Yeah, we mm, certainly got a lot of mm, that. KK8 seems much older than eight to me. Yes. Although, mm. no, that's not true. Blind, we, we thought it was young and we both picked young bottles. So well, that's true. Uh, for us, we did think it was young. Zelenir, I just paid 85 for the KK8 about a year ago. Uh, 85 euros. Yes, that's probably about what it should be. Triketa, I count KK8 as a novelty whiskey, but the Glendronic 18 is a staple on the shelf. I'm exactly in line with that. Yes, I'm exactly in line with that. Okay. Old versus New Arbor Beg sounds fun. I think we will do that on Thursday. I'll think about how we're going to do that. For now, though, thanks everyone for watching. Oh, I didn't push the pick a bottle. <laughs> and we will back with we'll be back with something on Thursday. Oh, look, we can drink a little bit more from the viscometer. Now, before we go. Are you excited to have this bottle or that you could pass? I'm very, very happy about this. It's so, brilliant. It's brilliant. So do you want to put it on the sharing list or do you want to keep it for yourself? Oh no, I keep it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's that good. <laughs> <laughs>